Checking in, I hope you can hear me. We are in Botswana. We haven't found anywhere to camp because everywhere is kind of barbed wire fenced in. We've asked at a couple of restaurants the idea of paying for a meal and then maybe they let you camp around the back, but nowhere takes car and there's nowhere to get cash out. Things could get right beat, but we've got barbed wire fences either side for hyena protection. So let's go. Ooh. Good evening. We were aiming for Francis Town, which would have been a 130k day in total, as we couldn't find uh, anywhere good for camping. Um, but just as we were kind of like, all right, let's beeline for the city, we found uh, among all the barbed wire fences in the south of us, we found an opening and we crossed the train tracks and found this kind of small abandoned house. Um, there are people nearby and the fire just made was a bit too big so we have attracted some attention to ourselves but um, this should be a fine place to sleep tonight yeah. and then tomorrow off to Francistown the second biggest city in Botswana I think Can you give it an abandoned house review? <sighs> Enough space, vegetation, <laughs> mice, spiders, seven out of ten. Botswana is a shining example of what can be achieved here if a nation focuses on eradicating corruption and effectively utilising its natural resources. In this case, Botswana is home to many diamond mines and has managed to use this wealth to make the country great. In most other African nations, funds from resources like these are all too often stolen by politicians or seized by warlords. The country is also home to some of the best national parks in Africa and has a booming tourism industry. Botswana was colonised by the UK, which was mostly moved by the British Empire to stop an invasion by the newly independent Boers of South Africa, which made Botswana officially a protectorate. The establishment of the protectorate allowed the British to maintain influence and ensure stability in the region while respecting the internal governance and customary laws of the Botswana people, who are the biggest ethnic group in Botswana. From a geopolitical perspective, Britain sought to safeguard its access to important trade routes and maintain a buffer zone between the Boer Republics and its colonies in Southern Africa. As far as I'm aware, the UK didn't steal resources from the country during the period of colonialism, 
thus giving it a huge head start over its neighbours who were plundered by the UK, France and other colonial powers, and gives some idea of what the continent could look like if colonialism had never happened. As we travel through the continent, I often ask people, how was life here? And Botswana was the first country since Kenya where people generally replied that their lives were good, and most people we spoke to earned enough money to have a relatively high standard of living. Good evening. We've had a nice long day cycling in Botswana. It's uh, Botswana Independence Day today, so shout out to them. Um, that, oh, let's cross. That means it's going to be quite busy tonight for camping. Also, we met a woman today who told us about there being lots of like ritual tribal killings happening locally. So, as you can imagine, uh, tonight it's a bit. It's going to be a bit more apprehensive than normal for wild camping. Also, the killings have been happening in this area. So, um, we have to try and find uh, a, yeah, somewhere fenced to camp. So, we're off to a restaurant now where people have camped before, but for a, a large amount of money. So, we're going to try and see if we can do that cheaper. And if not, I think the safest option would be uh, we're going to head to the police station, which is a few k away. Anyway, off we go. Good evening. We're in a tent in a hospital. It's bought on an Independence Day today. And due to those festivities, the doctor said there's going to be probably quite a few stabbings tonight uh, from people drinking too much. Um, so just like home. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are in a room, so we should be fine for tonight. And yeah, up bright and early tomorrow. And I'll show you a bit more of the hospital in the morning. Peace out. Happy Independence Day. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Towards um, Papaye? Papale? Palapi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for letting Thank us. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, this is amazing. It's very, very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Galebo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so much. Thank you. Sure. Have a lovely day. Have a good Bye -bye. <laughs>
That night we arrived into a town called Mahalapie and we were warned twice by local police walking around that it was a very unsafe town. We decided to try and check into a guest house, but everywhere we went uh, either said they were full even though they weren't or were quoting us ridiculous prices like the equivalent of about 50 US dollars, um, which is, you know, five, six times what we'd paid in previous countries and definitely not worth the, the same quality of room. So we eventually went to the local police station and luckily they did have some space for us in uh, one of the huts out the back. We have just reached the Tropic of Capricorn and that means that as we continue cycling south the sun will never be in front of us going south. So this is the limit where in the middle of the day the sun will be at the top of the sky otherwise it will just be behind us as it already has begun to be. I've noticed this uh, as I've stopped needing to put sun cream on my face because the sun is just always on my back as we're going south. They've got a nice uh, kind of statue here, which is a lot more than they had at the equator. Anyway, we should be reaching Gaborona tomorrow evening. And until then, it's just a long straight road, basically. Not a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> to save you watching more of the same footage, I'll fast forward a bit. Our route through Botswana was um, extremely straight, as I've said. And although the people there were amazing, it was much more of the same kind of landscape. Uh, on the way, just before Gaborone, we stayed at a government facility. I don't really understand what the place was, but we were allowed to camp there. We ended up in a small town that didn't have anywhere official to stay, and we'd end up just looking for buildings that had 24-hour uh, security and, and a fence, um, and these seemed to be good shouts. We stayed uh, almost every night in Botswana at uh, free places like this, as our funds were running low and we had to be quite quick because at this point Nadia had already booked her ticket back flying from Cape Town and we had X amount of days to uh, make distance across Botswana and South Africa. Anyway, I'll cut forward to Gaborone, the capital. Gone. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We're almost gone. Ha quick. Happy birthday, dear Nadia. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Big chungus. <laughs> That's me. This is where we spent Nadia's birthday in bed drinking that box of wine all day. <laughs> Not much else to do. No. Nice view outside. Thanks for watching as always, particularly through a slower episode. And don't forget to watch us next time where we'll be crossing into South Africa. And things are going to get a little bit more risky. Let's just say... Bye-bye. <laughs>